Hi everyone, I'm Jen here from TELUS World of Science Edmonton, and we're here today for another Maker Monday. This is the place where every Monday we get to do a design, build, test challenge using materials you can find just around your home. So, let's get started. So, a little bit about our problem this week. As you can see, we're here in the Nature Exchange Gallery, and the Nature Exchange Gallery is on the second floor of TELUS World of Science. So if we look outside, you can see for sure we are here on the second floor and we're expecting a delivery of food here for the animals tomorrow. Now, as you can also see out the window, there's construction going on here. And sometimes, as often happens at construction sites, they sometimes need to shut down certain parts of the building in order to carry on with their construction. So, the elevators are unfortunately going to be cut out tomorrow. Which means that if we're expecting a food delivery, well, we have to carry that food up from the ground floor. Up and down the staircases, back and forth, over and over and over again. And as you can imagine, that would be a huge pain in the butt. So, I would like to see if we can come up with a brilliant idea for some way that we could create a lift to bring the food from the bottom floor up to the second floor and make our lives a whole lot easier. So, I'm going to challenge us to make a model lift this week. This week, we're going to use the design build test strategy to build a model lift that will carry a load from the bottom up to the top. All right, so there's actually a lot of materials on our shopping list this week for today's challenge. So pay close attention, here we go. So to start off with, you are going to need something sticky that's going to help us hold things together. So I like to use masking tape. Masking tape is great. Um, you can also use different types of glue that you have at home. So you could use a glue stick, white glue. Today, for speed's sake, I'm going to be using a hot glue gun with hot glue sticks. If you have a hot glue gun at home, you can use one too. Just make sure you ask a grown up for help learning how to use one because they're quite hot and can be dangerous. Okay, so some of the tools that you're going to want to use, you're definitely going to want a black marker. So I have a permanent black marker here, a pair of scissors. I find it useful to have a pair of wire or edge cutters. If you have a hole punch, that is great. Or I also, this some is sometimes easier to make holes with, but they're quite sharp. So again, make sure you ask a grown-up for help if you have one of these. This is called an awl, and it's great for punching holes through stiffer materials. I also have a special cardboard cutting tool. This is a cardboard knife. It's serrated on both sides. So you do have to be careful with this too, but it's so great at cutting cardboard. If you don't have one, you should definitely check them out. And then I also have, this is um, a compass knife. So they're sharp as well. You do have to be careful. You might not have one of these at home, um, but this is going to help speed up our challenge today a little bit. So, okay, now on to the actual building materials. So, of course, we're going to be using cardboard today. I love cardboard, as many of you know. So, you can use any kind of cardboard. I do suggest using the corrugated two-sided cardboard. That's probably going to work the best today. But if all you have is cereal box cardboard, the thinner stuff, we can work with that too. We just might have to layer it up to make it stiffer. Okay, um, I've already pre-cut some cardboard in two circles, as you can see here, and into some long rectangles. Okay. We're also going to need some old bottle caps. Make sure you rinse them off before you use them. We're also going to need something to act as a, a, like a basket or a small bucket to carry a load. So I've got some paper cups here. I have a plastic cup. 
and another type of plastic cup here as well. Again, make sure you ask a grown-up before you take it because we'll probably be destroying these. Okay, and then we also have some connectors. So connectors are materials that help bind other materials together. So clothespins are great for that. I also have some binder clips. Those are awesome as well and a bit stronger than clothespins. We also have an old standby. So we have elastic bands, lots of those. And then we also have some paper clips. I like the large ones for this activity, but small ones should work too. The added bonus with paper clips is that you can actually pull them apart and use them as a wire as well. So they're not just connectors, they can be used in lots of different ways. Speaking of wire, I have some decorative wire here, but any kind of wire should work as long as you it's soft enough that you can move it and position it. I also have some brass fasteners. These are great for lots of design projects. And then string, lots and lots of string. So string, or if you have yarn, or maybe some thin rope at home, we're gonna need lots of that as well. What else do we have here? We have some pipe cleaners, those are great too. And then some barbecue skewers. If you have some of those, those are gonna be really helpful. If you don't, you could also use these guys, some Q-tips, cotton swabs. I also have some straws here that have been pre-cut. So those are great too. And then the last thing you're going to need today is something to actually be our load that we're going to carry up from the bottom to the top. So, I like using marbles for our load, as you've seen in some of our other videos, uh, but you could also use, maybe you wanna actually move something, like a, one of your friends that hangs out in your bedroom, or, so I have, I have a scientist here. We can use any sort of stuffy or toy that you have in your bedroom for this activity. Okay. So if you need to hit pause to go grab those materials, you can. Otherwise, we're gonna get started really soon. Good old gravity likes to keep things firmly planted on the ground. That's normally a good thing, but every so often it would make our lives a bit easier if gravity would let us cheat once in a while. Since that is unlikely to ever happen, humans have invented machines to lift heavy loads from the ground up to higher heights. One way we can solve this problem is using a simple machine called a pulley. So a pulley looks like this. It's essentially just a wheel, but there's a narrow groove on the inside. The other part we need to complete our pulley is we need an axle. So it's a wheel and axle system. So we're going to put our axle, which is just a barbecue skewer, through our pulley. Okay, and then what we wanna do is we wanna take our string, which is attached to our, our friend, Mr. Poe, and we're going to wrap it around that groove in the pulley. And what it lets us do is it lets us change the direction of the force. So we want our friend Poe to go up and we're gonna do that by pulling down on the string on the other side of the pulley. And that's going to help us lift our friend Poe. So let's do that right now. So if we pull down on the string, you can see Poe is moving up. Another simple machine we can use is a lever. So we have our friend Poe here on a ruler and the ruler right now is laying on top of a, an old bottle cap. And so the bottle cap is going to be the fulcrum or the pivot point of our lever. So watch what happens when we push down on this side of our lever. Because of the fulcrum or the bottle cap, it pushes Mr. Poe up on the other side. And then if we bring this side back up, Poe goes back down. 
So using a lever system, we can help move large loads or large weights. Another system we can use is multiple levers all put together in sort of a lever system or a, a linkage system. And so we're going to explore using a scissor linkage system today. And so I have one of those right here. And so all we've done is we've put together a whole bunch of cardboard levers, connected them with brass fasteners. And so if I grab onto the two at the end here, we can push them together and the whole system extends. And then if we pull them apart, the whole system squishes together or contracts. So maybe we can use this to help us solve our problem as well. The first step of our problem solving process is to create a few designs, which we think will work to help us solve our problem. So grab some paper and a pen and let's draw some designs. My first design is going to be based on a pulley system. I'm going to start with one pulley, test it, and then add a second one to see if it makes a difference. For my second design, I wanted to try out a scissor linkage system to see if that will let us carry our load. Now we get to build. Okay, so for our pulley design, I've chosen these materials. So let's see, I have some cardboard here to make our, our wheel out of. I also have an old plastic bottle cap. I've chosen a shish kebab or a barbecue skewer that's made out of wood. And then we're also going to need some tools for this one. So I've grabbed a cup so that we can stencil our circle, some hot glue, because that's going to put things together nice and quickly. I've also grabbed our awl to punch out a hole, but remember you can also use a hole punch for that as well. Uh, we're going to need a marker for stenciling. And I've also grabbed my edge cutters to help cut my barbecue skewer. We're all ready for our first test now. See, didn't I find an awesome test site? It looks like Poe is ready here for our first test. So we're going to put him into the basket. Now I made a really simple basket by just taking a deli container, punching some holes in it, attaching some pipe cleaners, and then use some paper clips to create a hook. There we go. Okay, so for our first test, we're going to pull on this string, which is wrapped up and around the pulley at the top, and then it comes down and is attached to our basket. So remember, we want the basket to go up, so we're going to pull down on this side of the pulley. So here we go, nice and slow. Nice, it's doing exactly what we hoped it would. Take him all the way up. All right, let's start bringing him down. Oh, nice and easy there. Nicely done. Good work, everyone. That was our first test. So it's time to choose which materials we're gonna need for our second design. So I've got cardboard again, no surprise there. We're gonna need that. I also have some masking tape. 
I have some brass fasteners. I also have some pre-cut rectangular cardboard for our levers. I'm also going to be using our awl again to punch out some holes. I have a pair of scissors and I have a marker. And, oh, I'm also going to use our cardboard knife today as well. Pose ready for our next test. For our second test, we're testing out the scissor linkage design and we've turned it into a really cool platform lift. So, pose already on top, eager to go. I'm going to come down here at the bottom so that we can push in the bottom scissor linkage and let's see if we can get him all the way to the top. Up, up, up. And away we go. Well, that's as far as it'll go. <laughs> we didn't quite make it to the top, but he did go up pretty high. I think if we were to do this again, I would want to add some more of these scissor linkages. We tested out two different designs today. We first tested out a pulley system with a basket to carry our, uh, to carry our load up. And then we also tried a scissor linkage platform system. So which of these two designs worked the best? It was actually a pretty tough call because both of them worked. Our second one didn't quite reach the height that we wanted to, but we were able to come up with a solution, which was to add some more of the scissor linkages. I think we did a really good job today. I would be interested in seeing what we did if we were to maybe combine these two systems. What if we made a really elaborate system that combined both pulleys and a scissor linkage or maybe other kinds of levers? There's other simple machines out there that can do some pretty cool things. So I want to see what you guys can do by making a really cool lift system that lifts a load from the bottom, from the ground, up to the top. I'm really excited to see what kind of designs you guys come up with this week. So if you can take a picture of it and put it in the comments down below and tell us exactly what load it was that you were rising from the ground up to the top, that would be really cool. And we will do our best to show it in our segment next week. So thanks again for joining us for another Maker Monday here at TELUS World of Science Edmonton. I hope you really enjoyed the design challenge this week and I hope you can join us again next Maker Monday for another really cool design build test challenge. And remember everyone, stay curious.